girl. Are you happy to be out at the lake? Uh. Like, oh, you like rolling in fish, don't you? Yeah, and smelly things. Go for walks in the sunset, running in fields, barking at rabbits. Boo Boo likes it out here. Here's your good girl. What about Jeff? Do you like living in your tiny house? Just about your size, huh? Yeah, just about your size. Who's my good boy? Oh, who's a good boy? So handsome. Hello, friends. It is... Monday the 8th of July and we have made it to Lake Afton in Goddard so just outside of Wichita we moved from I don't even know if I should say the name of this lake because it wasn't a fantastic experience but it was a helpful learning experience I'll say that it was time for us to go that the way this lake was ran the energy of the place it just wasn't what we wanted anymore what had happened was the last video that you guys saw was my feelings about living in the cabin and having things this video is going to be about now living in the scamp Let's see here, it's been like three months in this camp now. And on the topic of possessions, I've come to realize that the things that I wanted to have in this camp were not necessarily things that I was going to be using in this camp. I just had no other place for them. Now the place for those extra things is our Ford Econoline van. <laughs> it's a glorified storage unit, which to me is a little bit frustrating because it's kind of some of that stuff where I might need it, but I probably won't need it. But until I need it, I won't know that I need it. But really, what is the definition of need? Are these things I can do without? So our time here at Lake Afton is going to be about three weeks long. Sorry, I'm crocheting while I talk to you guys. It's going to be about three weeks here. And then we're off to see my little brother graduate from basic training from the Navy. So proud of that little boy. I love him. He's a good kid. So we're going to go see him in just a little while. So the time here is going to be spent going through our stuff and organizing and putting stuff away in the storage unit, which the storage unit is a whole nother topic that I will talk about later. But it was kind of one of those things that when we were moving out of the cabin, there was just so much stuff that I, I didn't want to deal with yet. I had already downsized so much that the things that I kept in the storage unit are like all the sentimental stuff and the stuff I just couldn't part with right away. That is a mental block that I will deal with later. <laughs> but for now, it's a storage unit, which is fine. Kind of gives us a chance to figure out what we need and what we don't need again do we really need anything <laughs> but I'm really stoked for this time at Lake Afton because at the other lake I was camp hosting and with that there was a schedule that came along with that and responsibilities and this that and the other which is great for some people and it was great and it served its purpose for a time but I was just ready to not be on a schedule anymore I wanted to have 
time to do my own things. When we were out there, I didn't have time to enjoy the lake that we lived at. We went on a boat one time with our friend Johnny Be Good. Johnny, if you're watching this, comment down below. Shout out. He's an awesome friend. So we went out the lake the one time because we just didn't have time to do the things that we enjoyed and the whole purpose of moving into the scamp was to have time. So that's what we're doing out here. Having the time to breathe, having the time to organize, having the time to have fun and do cool things like go fishing, go on walks, go bike riding. Those are all things that I want to do while I'm here and see the area. And this is a really cool lake. Um, my best friend Claire. Hi Claire, I hope you see this. She lives out in Goddard with her little family so we get to see them hopefully very very soon. She'll come hang out with us. But it's time to say goodbye to friends. It's time to get affairs in order before hitting the road absolutely full time and it's kind of scary because it's a transitional time it's a new beginning it's it's wild and the lake that we're at right now Afton is super beautiful we're on a little like peninsula area of the lake and got a really cool camp spot I'll show you around but it's right on the water it's a very private like little cornered spot like really beautiful if you're ever in the Wichita area. Highly recommend Afton. And it's it's just exciting that we're on the final countdown. Go ahead, now that song's stuck in your head too, isn't it? <laughs> so we're finally in a space where we can evaluate what jobs need to be done before we go and what tools we need to acquire before hitting the road. Those tools may or may not include solar panels and a composting toilet because being off grid and on the road, those are kind of necessary. Right now, the toilet situation is a whole nother video that I want to talk about the frustrations, but I kind of have wanted to do both scenarios before speaking my opinion about either. But right now, I don't care the negatives of a composting toilet. I want one because it can't be worse <laughs> than a black water tank. I'm not a fan, but it's fine. It it gets the job done. It's a pain in the butt, but you know, you just you do what you got to do, right? So, solar panels is something that I really want because when we like the campsite that we have now has electric hookup. Well, all the lights and the microwave and things like that run off battery and the water pump. The only thing that can't run off battery is the AC. So when we're on the road, we'll just be chasing the nice weather. In the summer, we'll be in the mountains. In the winter, we'll be, you know, south. Hopefully in Phoenix. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> Hopefully we'll go vis visit our friend and his little family. In a couple of weeks after we see my little brother graduate. That's like the near future plans. But, you know, plans always change. Things always happen. We do want to take our time through Colorado and see that area. Because we love it out there. It's like one of the funnest places that I've ever visited. And the weather is beautiful. So, I'm really stoked to be doing that. One of the things that makes me really nervous though is our online business. Jordan working right now has not given us enough time to really get very stable on that. I mean we have clients, we've pumped out a couple of projects, like it's all well and good. And he's putting in his two weeks notice today, fingers crossed. And then so once he puts, he'll be working for two weeks and then before we leave on our next big trip, he'll have a week off. And in that week, we need to sell the V6 Jeep Liberty. We need to sell 
the four to Connell line, and we need to take all of those ones, combine them, and get a V8. Much better towing in the mountains, much more storage space. I'm really excited to have a V8. So, all of that needs to happen in basically a week, because there's no way that we could do all of that and not have a vehicle for really a couple of days. We may rent a vehicle. We'll see. But all of those things consist of time that he doesn't have working a 9-to-5. He works as a car painter right now and it just takes up so much time so it almost feels like we're living in this camp just to go to work again and that's not what the plan was so it feels like we're still in the same trap of the work to pay for the house to go to sleep in to go to work the next day it's just a big cycle that I feel like everybody's stuck in and I feel like we're still in that same cycle but we're just in a smaller house <laughs> that's all it is so breaking that cycle is definitely a transition and it definitely takes time and it takes resources and it takes tools that nobody tells you about before you actually start doing it one of those resources being time <laughs> money <laughs> way more than we ever thought not as much as like buying a house and moving in and buying furniture and the usual white picket fence American dream that costs a lot more money than what we're doing now but it's still if if you're doing it as fast as we are currently doing it it's a lot of money at once and not a lot of money in we're totally fine. We've been saving up for a similar lifestyle for years now. And we've always been on the track to do so. And it seems like any time that we're in need of anything, it just appears. Like, we ran into one of our friends at the lake that we were at. Hi, Zeph. <laughs> ran into him out of nowhere and... He was so kind and so generous to us and you know right when we needed him was like two days before a storm he's like yeah you kids can come over if you know you need to do laundry take showers hang out whatever come hang out whenever you want we're like oh sweet thanks two days later we get woken up at 5 a.m from my parents who live way farther out and Zef and his family only lived a couple of miles away. So I was like, tornado warnings are going off. Mom and dad are blowing up our phones. Hey, there's warnings coming your way, whatever. So it was very jarring to wake up like that. I called Zef and I was like, hey. And he immediately goes, kids, come on over. I'm making coffee. Basement's ready to go. We'll wait out the storm. I was like, you're literally the best. So, and he's done so much more for us other than that. But it's just synchronicities like that. Anytime we've been in need of anything, the universe has provided. We had some hail damage on the Jeep. And the insurance company just very quickly responded to that. Made the claim. Got a nice check. And they were like, do with what you will. Your, your car's kind of old and crappy. So if you want to you know, fix engine repairs and stuff like that before any hail damage fixed, you know, delegate the check how you need. And I'm like, sweet, you mean I don't have to fix the hail? Great, because I don't really care what it looks like. It's looks like Jeep Liberty. So we're going to fix some of it, but most of it's going to go toward like new tires and there's a leak in the engine and stuff like that. So it's getting those small little tasks out of the way. And any time that those tasks have come up and they've cost an exorbitant amount of money, the universe just provides that flow of income for that specific job. It's just so wild. Like, when we were getting this camp set up, we were still in the driveway at the cabin. And I wanted a latex, all-natural, biodegradable mattress stopper. I was on the hunt. Most of them are fairly expensive. And I found one. And it was perfect and did all my research on it, but it was kind of expensive. And I was like, well, 
that's fine. I'll just get it anyway. I'll pull out of savings. Money is energy. When we need it, it'll come back. Well, it was like, you know, $210 or something. Something like that. Not two days later, after I had ordered this thing, a check in the mail came, and it was a check for $210 from an old savings account that I had with a job, and they're like, hey, the savings account hasn't been touched in a while, we sent you the check. And I'm like, for exactly $210, like, I kid you not. So, we live in abundance, like, when... We never want for anything. Everything happens just as it's supposed to happen every single time. This, there is just so much good that happens when you trust that things will happen the way they're supposed to. So that's one of the things that we've been learning is just don't stress too much about the little things. You have a goal, the universe will provide resources and a means to that goal even if you don't see how you're going to get to that goal and it's been really beautiful to watch that process happen and unfold and I remember being at the cabin right before I moved when I filmed the last video I was so stressed I was like there's 10,000 things to do before the next step like how am I ever going to complete any of this and that's why I was so stressed out in that video, was just the amount on my to-do list was overwhelming. And the emotional strain of all of that was wild. But as soon as it happened, and we started living it, the to-do list is still the same, but somehow it's not as stressful when you trust that everything will happen in time that needs to happen. And if it doesn't need to happen, it won't. It's just been a wild ride, and I wish I could go back in time and tell that sad, sad little Tori. <laughs> Give it two weeks, and it will be okay. Everything is okay, as long as you are okay with everything. Untethered Soul, quote, best book ever. If you haven't read it, go read it. It's literally one of my favorites, but that is something that I live by, I say it to myself all the time, everything is okay once you are okay with everything. And it will alleviate so much stress. So now that we're here, it's a new chapter and this chapter is very, very short and then we'll be on to the next adventure and I guess we'll just see what happens. I'm very, very excited to see what's in store for us. We'll see you guys later. Boo boo, come on. Let's go show them around. Show the campsite. Give me the tour later. All right. telling you about. We got our own little picnic table. We got a fire pit full of trash that some other people left. Always clean up after yourselves. Leave no trace. Hey, Boo! Sorry about the interruption. Boo's a bad girl. She wanted to bark at the neighbors. Thought they was trying to attack, but they weren't. They were just walking. Anyway, where we are, right at the edge of the lake. It's actually really stunning out here. Sorry about the audio. It's a little bit windy. And over there is the other side of the lake. It's actually a really nice spot. All the other campers are like way, way over there. I just can't wait to go fishing right here. 
All right, boo. You wanna say bye? Say see you later. See you in the next one, bye. Thanks for coming and hanging out at our camp spot. Oh my gosh, you're so cute, but you're so bad. Naughty girl. All right, bye guys. Thanks for watching.